He's still wanting to do that today through His church, through His people, through those who believe what He says. Amen. So, this wasn't just Jesus' ministry. Believers are called to see the kingdom come in the same manner in which Jesus did. Bill Johnson, who I quoted earlier, he wrote, Heaven invading earth is simple in that every time someone is healed, converted, or delivered, a piece of heaven has come upon them, destroying the devil's work. So when someone gets saved, it's destroying the devil's work in a person's life. When someone gets healed physically, emotionally, mentally, it's destroying the devil's work. When, when someone gets out of addiction, it's destroying the devil's work. And that's why Jesus came. That's when heaven comes to earth. The kingdom comes upon people. People get delivered and set free. Now, we do that through prayer, but we have to step into that. You guys are called to do that even now at this moment. So, the ministry of healing which has been initiated through Jesus' earthly ministry and made available through the atonement must be pursued through those who prioritize the gospel of the kingdom. We have to pursue it. It doesn't just happen automatically. Okay? So, covenant, atonement, and kingdom. Now let's talk for just a minute in closing about the commissioning accounts in Scripture. And those point to the reality that Jesus intended his followers to carry out his ministry until he comes again. Uh, Dr. Bob Savell, who pastors a church in Tucson, Arizona, a friend of mine, he wrote, they, talking about the disciples in the early church, they were trained to bring about God's kingdom and rule on earth. These original disciples were forerunners of, dis, of a discipleship movement based on the authority and miraculous power that God gave to them and intended to continue until His second coming. This ministry of Jesus was never supposed to stop. It's supposed to continue in everything that He did, that He trained the 12 disciples and the others, the 70 that followed, the, mo the others that followed Him. He said, you know, I want you to do these things and I want you to train everyone else to do them. So... Matthew wrote in, uh, in chapter 28 of his gospel, verses 19 and 20, Jesus is about to ascend. He's about to go into heaven. He's risen from the dead, and he says to his followers, he says, now, and if Jesus were about to ascend and go to heaven in front of me, and he's like, guys, these are my last instructions on earth to you, I would listen. I would pay attention. He said, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. He said, so when you go and you spread the gospel and, you, and people come into my kingdom and you teach them to follow in everything that I taught you to do and showed you to do, you do the same thing. And you keep doing that until I come back. So Jesus' instruction to heal the sick, cast out demons, and that makes us nervous, in America when we talk about stuff like that, but it's a reality. And those things try to keep people enslaved to bondages. Cast out demons and to even raise the dead extends to all these disciples for generations to come. Another quote from Bob Savell, he wrote, What had they been taught? They had been taught primarily how to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God through healing the sick and casting out demons. So you proclaim the good news of the gospel and then you say, okay, to show that it's real, we're going to heal the sick and we're going to cast out demons. Okay. There's also another commissioning account. The first one was in what we read in Matthew 28. There's another commissioning account in Mark 16. Another account of one of the last things that Jesus said to his followers. He instructs his disciples to preach the gospel and that they should expect certain signs in accompanying that preaching. Here are the signs that they should see are deliverance from demons, new tongues, protection from harm, 
and miraculous healings through the laying on of hands. Now, Mark, when he writes about this, in verse 17, you know what his condition is? He, he says, these signs will accompany those who believe. He didn't say, these signs will accompany the apostles that lived when Jesus was born. He didn't say, these signs will accompany the early church until the Bible is written. He didn't say, these signs will only accompany apostles and prophets. He said, what's the condition? Those who believe. Those who believe will see these things happen. If you're 10 years old today and, you're, and you believe in what Jesus said and he's declared in doing, signs will accompany what you do. That's what the Bible says, okay? So the condition to see these things manifest is not a specific anointing, not a title, not a time period in history, but it is a condition of having faith and expectation. Now, several years ago, my daughter Emily, and Emily's not in here, she's teaching, but you all know Emily, and she, um, she has a thyroid condition, and she had uh, four growths appear on her thyroid. Uh, we went to the doctor, the, the doctor looked at it and said, I'm very concerned about this. Okay. They were a little afraid that it might be some type of cancer. So uh, they were going to send Emily up to have a scan done. And they had people there to remove them immediately if the scans looked like cancer. So before Emily went to OU Medical Center, um, she was supposed to go up there and have this done. She was in chapel. Okay? She'd been prayed for by a lot of people. But that morning in chapel, we had all the students. Some of you were here when we prayed for Emily. And we had all the students gather around her and speak and declare healing to her. Lay hands on her, pray for her, surround her. She gets there, and I wasn't there. It was Miss Jamie and Emily. And they x-ray again her thyroid. And of those four growths, only one was left. And it was so small that they were like, we don't even have to worry about this. Again, another medically verified miracle. And you know when it came? Bill Johnson didn't pray for her. Heidi Baker didn't pray for her. Randy Clark didn't pray for her. And I, those are all amazing people. But you know who prayed for her and saw the miracle? A bunch of students in a Christian school who had experienced the presence and the glory of God. And they believed what Jesus said. And they had faith and they had love. And they laid hands on her and they, they believed what God said. And she was healed. Those who believe, those who will live a life of pursuit of the gospel of the kingdom will see these things happen. Now, you know what? It took several prayers. I don't understand certain things. I don't understand why not everyone gets healed immediately at first. Okay. But whatever happened, several several prayers, the last prayer took. <laughs> and she was healed. Amen. In closing, Dr. Randy Clark wrote, When we accepted the Lordship of Jesus Christ and His Savior, it came with responsibility. We are the ones in this world who have an anointing, and because of this, we should at least offer to pray for the sick and the lost. If you're a Christian here today, you're not a Christian just because you said a prayer. You're a Christian because you said, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey you. I'm going to pursue you, and I'm going to pursue the things that you said I'm supposed to pursue. And you guys, if you're a Christian, you have an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Whether you feel it or see it or not, there's an anointing on your life to pray for the sick and see miracles happen. Amen.